Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so today we're going to talk about what are called slant asymptotes. If you remember last time we talked about horizontal asymptotes, um, all in the context of graphing what are called rational functions. Um, those are functions that are composed of a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Uh, I'm just going to flash the notes from last time real quick here so you can, if you don't have the notes from last time, you can go ahead and pause the video and, uh, and go ahead and write them down. Zoom out just a bit here so you can see what we have. Um, these were the notes, in other words, the procedure for graphing just the old style rational functions that don't have slant asymptotes, um, functions that have just horizontal asymptotes. So if you want to go ahead and take those down now, go ahead and pause the video, take these notes down, um, and then I'm going to move on. All right, so hopefully you took those notes down. Um, and if you didn't, you can always rewind the video and take a look at it again. Uh, but like I said, today we're going to talk about what are called slant asymptotes. And they follow the same procedure as, uh, as horizontal asymptotes in that slant asymptotes tell us what the end behavior of my graph is going to be. Um, when I'm talking about end behavior, I mean what happens as x gets very, very large and as x gets very, very small. So what happens at the extremes of our graph? Um, that's what's denoted by end behavior. And if you remember, for horizontal asymptotes, our asymptotes usually looked like this. They were perfectly horizontal lines, and our end behavior always followed along that horizontal asymptote. So as we got far away from the center, we started to follow along that horizontal asymptote. Well, if you remember, horizontal asymptotes, um, those show up when you have a degree, the degree of your numerator, is either equal to the degree of the denominator or the degree of the numerator is actually less than the degree of the denominator. And there was a few special cases and I recommend you go back and look at the previous videos um, so you can tell the dis distinction between those two. So slant asymptotes occur uh, when the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator. So when the numerator degree is greater than the denominator degree you're going to end up with a slant asymptote. Sometimes they're called oblique asymptotes. Uh, so I'll make a little note of that here. Slant or oblique asymptotes. Um, they occur when the degree of my numerator is greater than that of my denominator. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples here. And these are pretty basic. And all we're doing here is trying to determine whether or not we're going to have a slant asymptote. So let's take a look at this here. For this example right here, the very first one, we are going to have a slant asymptote. So all the ones in this column here have slant asymptotes. The ones over here don't have slant asymptotes. These have just regular horizontal asymptotes. So let's look. We, have, we take the degree of our numerator. Now remember, the degree is given by the highest power on the exponent. So here's my exponent, 3. That's the biggest exponent I have in the numerator. So this is degree 3 on top, and I have degree 2 on the bottom. So this right here is going to have a slant asymptote. I look at the next one, fourth degree on top, first degree on the bottom, slant asymptote. I look at the third one here, third degree on top, second degree on the bottom, definitely going to have a slant asymptote here. So when we don't have slant asymptotes, we have horizontal asymptotes at some value. Um, we're going to have them at, in this case, since the degree is the same on the top as it is on the bottom, our horizontal asymptote is going to be at 3. And over here, the degree is also the same on the top and on the bottom. That means my, my asymptote, my horizontal asymptote, is going to be at 3 fourths. So at y equals 3 over 4. And that's just going to be a perfectly horizontal line. And the very last one down here, we see that the degree in the numerator is less than the degree of the, at in the denominator, which means that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, that's really the only difference between slant asymptotes and um, horizontal asymptotes. So how do we find that slant asymptote? I think the best way of doing this is just to go through an example, because we are going to have to use either long division or synthetic division, depending on what kind of polynomial you have. So if we look at this example here, I have a function that says f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 divided by x minus 3. Now, in this case, you can use either long division or synthetic division. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire uh, long division or synthetic division process here, uh, but I'll show you, I'll show you what it's going to look like here. 
So first things first, we always want to follow those steps and we're going to go ahead and we're going to factor out the numerator and factor out the denominator so that we can find our zeros and our y-intercepts. I'm sorry, our zeros and our vertical asymptotes. So let's go ahead and factor this out. So we get f of x is equal to, if we factor that numerator, we get x plus 1, x minus 5, divided by x minus 3 here. So let's list out our x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts, rather, yes, our x-intercepts, or zeros here, are going to be denoted by the numerator. So we're going to find these zeros by setting x plus 1 equal to 0 and x minus 5 equal to 0. Solve these out, and I get zeros at x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 5. So we see that we have two zeros here, and now we can go ahead and figure out what our vertical asymptotes are going to be. So vertical asymptotes, I take the denominator and set that denominator equal to 0. So I'm going to say x minus 3 equals 0. That means that I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So we found our zeros, we found our vertical asymptote. The next step is going to be to find our y-intercept. That's probably the easiest one to figure out here. So to find our y-intercept, I'm going to figure out what is f of 0. If I can find f of 0, that'll tell me what my y-intercept is. So f of 0 is merely equal to 0 plus 1, 0 minus 5, divided by 0 minus 3. And that's going to be equal to negative 5 over negative 3, which is simply equal to 5 over 3. Uh, I always have approximately 5 over 3 is going to give us a little under 2. It's going to be 1.67 approximately. And that's f of 0, which tells us our y-intercept. y-intercept. All right. So now we can start to focus on our slant asymptote. So we know our zeros, we know our vertical asymptotes, we know our y-intercept. So if we look at our notes again, we have factor the numerator and denominator, find the zeros, find the vertical asymptotes, find the horizontal asymptotes. Ooh, we don't have a horizontal asymptote in this case because the degree of our numerator is higher than that of the denominator. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of long division, or in this case, we can actually use synthetic division here to figure out what our slant asymptote is going to be. So a slant asymptote <coughs> is the equation, or the, the equation of your asymptote is going to be given by the quotient of that value. So what we're looking at, it's going to look a little bit like this here. So when I do this long division, um, I'm going to end up with my quotient, so when I do this long division problem, it looks a little bit like this, so it's going to be f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 divided by x minus 3. All I have to do is divide this out, and when I divide this out, I'll notice that my equation, f of x, is simply equal to x minus 1 minus 8 over x minus 3. Now, if you're a little bit confused how I got from here to here, I really do encourage you to do the long division. So, I would say go home and practice this. So, divide using long division. or synthetic. If you can do those two things, if you can get from this point to this point right here, then the next step is going to be pretty easy for you also. 
So once we have this long division all worked out, the part of the equation that we're interested in, the part that's going to give us our slant asymptote, is going to be this section right here. We're not going to worry about the remainder portion. We're only going to worry about this equation that came out, the little sort of linear or sometimes quadratic or sometimes even cubic equation that will pop out into, out of your quotient. So remember, this is your quotient, this is your remainder. We're looking at just the quotient part of that long division because that's going to tell us what our slant asymptote is. So this guy right here, that's the equation of our slant asymptote. So the equation of our slant asymptote is given by the quotient, not the remainder portion. All right, <clears throat> so now we can keep going with what we were doing before, where we make our information wave map. So I'm going to take my pen and a little ruler, and I'm going to make perfectly straight line so that I can create my, my number line and my info wave. So let's label this info wave. And here we go. Remember, the info wave is just going to tell us where we're positive and where we're negative on our graph. And if there's any multiplicity in our function, uh, then we have to take that into account and bounce or wiggle or cross wherever uh, the function calls for it. So there's my zero point right there. And remember, I'm going to label just two things on, or two different characteristics on my number line here, on my info wave. I'm going to put the zeros down, and I'm going to put my vertical asymptotes. So I remember that I have a couple of zeros. I have a zero at negative one, and I have a zero at five, and then I have a vertical asymptote at x equals three. So these are the three things that are going to go on my information wave. <coughs> so I have an, a zero at negative one, which means I'm going to put a little circle, a little blue circle there, a little blue circle at negative one, and I'm going to put another blue circle at positive five over here. And then my asymptotes are denoted by a red x, and I'm going to put a red x right at 3. And if you notice, I'm not really drawing this to scale. It's just so that I can see where I'm going to be positive and where I'm going to be negative. It's just going to tell me some information here. All right. <clears throat> Since there's no multiplicity, meaning that this is not squared, this is not squared, and this factor down here is not squared, we're just going to cross through all of them. And we always start up at the top right-hand corner for our information wave. And we're going to go through every point of interest. So we're going to go through here. And we're going to come back up through here. And we're going to go back down through right there. So remember, this tells me where my function is positive and where my function is negative. So down here, it's negative, 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 negative. Over here, it's going to be positive, 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 positive. Negative, 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 negative. And finally, we're going to end on a positive note here and go positive, positive, positive the whole way. So now I've laid out what my function is going to look like. In other words, where it's going to be positive and where it's going to be negative. So I can start to graph it out now. So I'm going to lay out my axes <coughs> right down here. Here and here. And remember, I'm just trying to make a rough sketch here. So all I'm doing is making a quick rough sketch. So now here are my axes and I have one one other thing I need to toss on here. So before I put my zeros and my y-intercept, I want to lay down my horizontal, my um, slant asymptote. I'm sorry for saying horizontal, but my slant asymptote. Now, my slant asymptote, if I remember correctly, was at x minus 1, right? That's why we did this long division. That's why we got the quotient and the remainder here. The quotient part, x minus 1, well, I have to graph that equation right on here. So my slant asymptote is at x minus 1, which means that I'm going to start down at x minus, at negative 1, right over here. And it's going to have a slope of 1. So I'm going to go up 1, over 1, right there. And that's just going to do me fine. All I need is just a rough idea of where this slant asymptote is going to go. So I know how to behave as my line approaches that slant asymptote. So Here's my slant asymptote. I'm just going to draw it in with a dashed orange line to show that that is indeed the slant asymptote right there. And I'm also going to label it with the equation 
So the equation of my slant asymptote is important to know, especially since we're just doing a rough sketch. So the equation of my slant asymptote is y equals x minus 1. And that way, I know whether you know how to do this or not. So let's say that you had done this incorrectly, you did the long division incorrectly, but you graphed it out correctly and you followed everything right. Well, then you're probably going to be in better shape than if you hadn't given me any equation at all. This tells me that you know that the slant asymptote has this equation, and it gets us just a little bit further than we would have gotten had we not written that equation down. Okay, so now let's lay our zeros, y-intercepts, and vertical asymptotes right on this graph. If you remember, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So this is 1. So I'm going to say that 3 is about right there. So this is at 3. And I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. So there's my vertical asymptote. And I know that I have two zeros. I have one at positive 5. So I know I have to cross through that point. And I have another one at negative 1. So I'm going to say that's negative 1 right there. So negative 1, positive 5. I've got my two zeros. Now I have to throw in my y-intercept. And we said that our y-intercept earlier was at 5 over 3, which should be 1.67. So let's go up here to just, I don't know, somewhere near 1.67. There we are. And label it such. That's going to be 5 over 3. OK, so now. I do believe we are indeed ready to graph this out. And we're going to use our information wave. Now, we know that the horizontal or the, um, the slant asymptote or oblique asymptote in this case is going to tell us how we're going to end. Always, right? This horizontal or oblique asymptote is always going to tell us what our end behavior is going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw in the end behavior now, right up against that slant asymptote. And I can draw it on both ends, right there. So now, we're going to use this guy right here. This little section tells me that I have to be positive until I touch the 0 at 5. After that point, I'm negative until I touch the asymptote. So I'm just going to follow this guy right along here, try and get it just nice and neat. It goes positive, positive, positive until I cross the 0. And then it stays negative, 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 all the way down. So remember, when you come up to an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, you only have two choices. I can go up or I can go down. The info wave tells me which way I have to go. So if I'm negative up to the asymptote, then I have to come over here and I have to stay negative. And I should have drawn this a little bit clearer, but that's, you know, I get the general idea here. If I do it again, I maybe would scoot this over just a bit and come in a little smoother. But I get the general idea, and that's why we label our points. All right, so now let's see what happens on the, right, the left-hand side of this asymptote at 3. If I look at my info wave, I'm positive until I cross through that 0 again. So if I'm positive on the left-hand side of this asymptote right here, that means that I'm not coming from the bottom. I'm coming up from the top. So this is going to go up. And now I'm going to go this way, this way, this way, follow the vertical asymptote, cross through my y-intercept. Here we go. We're going to cross through the 0, right? We're still positive, positive, positive. Now we start to go negative. We're going to go and touch up with our other asymptote over here. So this isn't a very good sketch. If I had to go back and redo it, I might smooth things out just a little bit more. Um, but I get the general idea, and most importantly, every piece of my graph is labeled. So this tells me exactly what needs to happen. Now, this right here is a completed problem, and we are done.